maybe Dr. Shawashi, I'm sorry, uh, remembers that story, but we had this case of this uh, bar owner in Bretagne, and he, he, he did a hunger strike for a few weeks, and, he, and then he was welcomed by President Sarkozy, who said, oh yes, but you shouldn't go on a hunger strike, and so on and so forth. And, uh, and he met, I can't remember what the name of this organization is in France, support, well, supposed to support the uh, hospitality industry. I can't remember now. And they were of no help whatsoever. And I think that the Netherlands, uh, the, the strength of your country is that it's small. And you, 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 you were able to react very quickly in France. Maybe in Marseille, maybe in the south of France, you had some people reluctant to it and they're still you know, allowed the smoking and so on, and they just pay the policeman and that's fine. But other, uh, otherwise, I think it's unfortunately too late. We have many problems. Our communications thread, actually, you probably remember, Bill. And uh, he was, uh, he couldn't read English, so the problem was big for him. And uh, I think he was Liberté de Choisir, I think, something like that. Um, and uh, he didn't, uh, so it, it, that's been a lot of problems in France. We did have some French correspondents, but they dropped off. I mean, Dan, even Daniel Charest. Um, but um, and then all the other organizations, then they just seem to wither. I know with Monsieur Lallier, because that was the person we talked about, he didn't, he, he, he just couldn't read English. That was the big problem there. Mm, well, I did translate all the documents he needed. Did you? Was it, I did give you his contact, didn't I? Yes, I, I, call, I called him, I did everything I could, I faxed, he didn't have a fax, I faxed, because it was a small village in France, so there was him and, and the bakers. And the goat. Yeah, and that was, that, and, it, and it shows how how uh, how much it affected remote areas in France or elsewhere. That it, it just breaks a community, social cohesion. And uh, no, I got I got in touch with him, and I invited him to the to the conference last year, and he didn't come. Uh, but I think that Monsieur Lallier is a different example. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Patrick is asking, well, where do you see things going um, with alcohol next? Five, ten years. Speaking about Britain particularly, maybe the EU as well, do you think there's going to be a big move there? Uh, I, I don't, from my perspective, I don't see them going very well. Um, if, uh, you know, on some policies, um, some issues, um, a lot of people are very anxious or very enthusiastic about the forthcoming election because they feel um, either that if um, the current government is re-elected, then things will continue to go the right or the wrong way. Uh, similarly, if there's a change in government, then things will turn around or um, good things will become bad. I think that alcohol is an area where um, a lot of, uh, or some bad things have um, been done. Uh, there's more in the queue to be done to the alcohol industry and more importantly to consumers of alcohol. And that isn't, as far as I can tell, going to be very different if there is a change of government. Um, on, on issues such as alcohol and obesity, to this point, it appears that the conservative opposition is um, as convinced of the need to adopt a paternalistic, or to maintain a paternalistic attitude uh, to public health uh, as the current Labour government. Uh, so sadly, uh, I think one has to be at best cautiously pessimistic, but further to what I said this morning, um, this may hasten uh, the, the, the response from the public because I think another five or ten years of, um, of this stuff is only going, especially as we spread from issue to issue, we get to the point where almost everyone in the country has had their particular uh, pleasure or vice impacted by regulation, coercion, um, denormalization, you name it. So uh, don't expect great things, even if there is a change of government, but I think long-term expect um, that those who've brought in these, these unfortunate policies are going to be punished one way or another uh, by the public that they claim to care so much about. Michael, what do you say has been in 2020? 
Alcohol's not such a big thing in, in America, is it? It hasn't quite followed on from smoking in the same way it has in, in Britain. But the obesity thing is... Not, not is as strongly, big. not as strongly. But I, I do think alcohol uh, got hit heavily uh, in, the, in the 90s, and I think it will continue to get hit heavily. Over the next few years, I think, in the United States, we're going to see a real problem with economics. And they're going to try to fix that First of all, with more taxes on tobacco, which is crazy given the amount of taxes they've dumped on it in the last few years. They're close to the limit of how much they can tax cigarettes in America right now. A little bit more, and the penalties of having to deal with the black market are going to begin to completely and clearly outweigh the advantages of the extra money. The black market makes cigarettes available to children who would never walk into a store. They're only 12 years old. They're not going to run into a store and try to fake buying cigarettes. But hey, if the guy on the street corner in the back alley is selling them, you might get some good pot along with it. You never know. Just what we want, just what we want for our kids, right? Introduction to that kind of element. Uh, if you lower the taxes, the black market is no longer profitable. So I think over the next 10 years, we're going to see some increase in tobacco taxes, but we're going to see a big increase in alcohol taxes, because alcohol has not caught up with tobacco at all in terms of taxation. If you were taxing a six-pack of beer at the same price you're taxing a pack of cigarettes, it would cost you about $20 a six-pack. $25 a six-pack for cheap beer. I'm not talking the good stuff now, Bill. <laughs> um, and I think where they, may, where they may finally go is full legalization and taxation of marijuana. That's a gold mine that they haven't tapped into yet. And I think they may. And it'll be very interesting to see whether the smoking bans in senior citizens' homes and apartment complexes, just how they deal with marijuana smoke. But if you tax it, it means that you legalize it. Yes. So how are they going to do that? That's exactly how they would do it. They would legalize it <coughs> and tax it. And the way they would swing the American people around to believing to do that is by saying, we do this, or your income taxes will double. Yeah. Blackmail. Right, blackmail. You either legalize marijuana or well, we're all going down the toilet. Are we going to... Why is America always the first one with a bun? We have, an, we have a new one from America. Salt. Salt in restaurants. Yes. Why because always America? We're, we're kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> why, why Remember, we invented third-hand smoke. Why do they keep voting for Bloomberg? How is, how is this happening? Bloomberg what, has what, what an kind enormous... What people do they put up against this guy? He has an enormous <laughs> amount of money, and uh, he's in the dominant political party in New York. Those two things came together. That's, that's like asking, why did George Soros invest in Europe? Why didn't you let George Soros invest in Europe? <laughs> we didn't vote for him, to be fair. <laughs> we didn't vote for Bloomberg either. But he didn't Somebody did. did. Hello. 